Welcome to this uh, free immigration help channel. Today I wanted to make a video because I've got a pretty good question regarding the case, uh, immigration case processing times, how to do the research on how long it is supposed to take, um, what to do if it takes a little bit too long, and uh, how to know if it's too long or if it's not too long. So let's uh, get straight into it. As always, the main website that we're going to use is uscis.gov. This is the uh, official website for U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. All of the information can be found there. Um, all of the information that you will need, all of the resources, all of the application forms, uh, literally everything you need can be done on USS.gov. And before we move on, I kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a warning whenever it comes to immigration advice, uh, like the advice from myself even, right? Um, everything, all the advice that I give you, always double check it on USS.gov just because things get updated, uh, things change every day. Uh, so you don't wanna be stuck with an outdated information right you want to check for yourself and if you're getting your information from other sources again make sure to verify them with uss.gov because there's a lot of information out there there's a lot of spam scam out there people trying to make money from you and uh, you get the point so how do we check the processing times for the immigration case very simple you go to uss.gov you scroll down and uh, you will see it right here in manage your case. There's a check your case status, which if you do have the receipt uh, from sending the application, the receipt number you can enter on that page and uh, it will give you the current state of your case and uh, check processing times. So just click on that and this will take you to the page where you can select your form number and then your field office or service center. So let's uh, kind of concentrate on field office and service center first before we get into the forms uh, because I had some questions on my channel and there were some confusions uh, about that. So whenever it comes to the field offices, these are your local, um, um, your, your local immigration offices that take care of certain cases. And then the service centers, they're the big immigration kind of centers, the processing centers, where they process certain type of cases. So for certain type of cases, uh, if it's, it's going to be the field office that will take care of that. And for certain type of cases, it's going to be the service center. So, for example, let's say you are filing um, an application to register permanent residence, green card, right? Application I-485. In that case, you're going to have both the service centers and your local field offices. As you can see, these are the local field offices. That's how they're going to show up. Uh, for example, if you live in Cincinnati, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, most of the time it's going to be the bigger cities in the States. Um, they're going to have their own field offices. As you can see, Brooklyn, New York, uh, Boston, Massachusetts, um, Atlanta, Georgia, right? And then you have your service centers that are big. California Service Center, Nebraska Service Center, Texas Service Center, Vermont Service Center. These are four main big service centers that process certain cases. So application to register permanent residence, both service centers and field offices. Now let's say we switch to application for travel document. Here you have just the service centers. Only the service centers take care of that. Vermont, Texas, Nebraska, National Benefit Center, and California Service Center. All right. So depending which state you filed from, for example, I'm not 100% sure, but I think if you're in Florida uh, for I-131, I think your case goes to the Texas, Texas Service Center. I'm not 100% on that, but you get the point. Depending which state you're in, a certain service center will process your application right uh, but let's say we do the n400 which is the application for naturalization for your citizenship in that case we only have the field offices local field offices all right so hopefully i made that clear and understandable so now 
let's get back to, for example, I-131, right? The application for a travel document. Now you apply for that and uh, let's say you live in Florida, whatever, and your uh, application went to Texas Service Center, for example. Uh, click on that, get processing time, and that will give you a range, actually give you a table below, all right? So let's take a look at the table. Um, we have over here, okay, so here, as you can see with this application, because there are several different types based on which you are applying for that, for example, if you're a refugee or asylee applying for a travel document, so receipt date for a case inquiry in November 2020, so now they are processing about three and a half to five months, right? Permanent residents applying to re-entry permit, three and a half to five months. And then three and a half to five and a half months if you're Haitian refugee and all other uh, applications for advanced parole. So between three and a half and five and a half months. All right. Uh, let's give, let me give you an example with something else that has to do with the field office. For example, uh, back to N400 application for naturalization. Let's say you live in Atlanta, Georgia. Where is Atlanta, Georgia? Here it is. Get processing time. So if you're if your field local field office is in Atlanta, Georgia, you filed the N400. This is the processing times between 13 months to 23 months. And the reason why I wanted to give you this is because I want you to know that it's um, not always a matter of you know couple months difference. As you can see, this is pretty much a whole year in between. So it can take between 13 months all the way up to 23 months. All right um application for naturalization and right now they're processing they're starting to process the receipt date for case inquiry is uh may 23 2019 so if your uh receipt on your application that you sent right and the receipt you got the receipt if it is uh, older than may 23 2019 then you can file a case inquiry and I will do the separate video so that just so that it's easier to discover. But I'll show you in this video as well how to do the case inquiry. It's very simple. So let's say let's say you filed more than two years ago for your application for naturalization, and nothing happened. All right. So what do you do? How do you file that case inquiry? So it's very simple. Uh, you scroll all the way down and as you can see there's inquire about a case outside normal processing time so you click on that and it will take you to the e-request page where you will be able to enter all the information regarding you regarding the case so let's say form number N400 from our example so you select the N400 uh, application for naturalization that's the one you enter the receipt number now the receipt number is the number that you will have on your receipt notice so once you submit the application you will get the notice that the immigration services accepted your application and the notice will have the receipt number it's not the alien registration number it's the receipt number enter that here enter the date when it was filed and again the date it was filed, you should use the date on your receipt notice that uh, the application was accepted. That's the date you want to put here. And then all your information, first name, middle name, last name, date of birth, alien registration number. If you're applying for naturalization, you're probably going to have that. Then the mailing address, uh, last action taken on the case. Now with that one, what you want to do is you want to go to uscis.gov. And then you want to go to check your case status and here you want to enter your receipt number again and uh, whatever the receipt number is enter it there it will give you the status so let's say you filed the N400 the application for naturalization it's been over two years you haven't heard anything and when you go here checking the uh, current status of the case it just says that the application was received that's it all right so you copy that application was received and paste it right here so application received that's it all right so this is the last action taken on the case application was received if let's say it says 
background check scheduled all right background check scheduled now if the background check the biometrics appointment was scheduled and you went and did your biometrics appointment then you say background check biometrics appointment whatever by me you can put biometrics you can put background check depending what it says on this online status all right um, and then biometrics appointment completed something like that that's it it doesn't have to be very specific but just to give whoever is reviewing this re inquiry you want to make it as easy for them as possible all right and this is the way to do it and then your email and then this form is completed by applicant petitioner or if it's whoever legal guardian parent uh that's it submit all right now let me give you kind of a word of uh warning uh, just not really warning but just because you're filing this application uh inquiry thing the case inquiry uh does not mean that it will do anything most of the times the response from usas you will receive the response you will receive a letter uh, it's very just a boilerplate and it just says that hey your case is still being processed we're still reviewing it whatever be patient that's pretty much it most of the times does not mean that this inquiry doesn't help but again don't have too high of the expectations all right so again back to check case processing times very simple uh here's the website i will i will put this link in, in the description below so you can just go directly here um and uh just find your application that you filed whatever it is permanent residence uh petition by alien investor petition for alien relatives they're, they're all of all of them here then find your service center whichever one you filed to nebraska get processing time and uh it will give you either the table below with specific uh based on which ones you filed the uh, uh criterias or it will give you the actual processing times here for this one you see it's, it's uh, kind of different depending on which one you're filed based on uh, but you get the point so hopefully this was helpful if it was uh please consider subscribing hitting, hitting the like button uh it definitely helps if you do want to help some more there is a donation link in the description below uh whatever you can it definitely helps uh to grow my channel thank you very much guys for watching if you have questions you can drop them in the comments below and uh, i always do i uh, try to do it weekly or at least once every two weeks go through all of your questions and make a video answering all of the questions because making a video answering the questions is much easier for me because i can actually instead of just typing up whatever i can just go and actually show you on the usas.gov website where to go where to find your answers how to do it and it's just much easier uh so thank you for watching and uh, i'll see you in the next video